house. The game is mine. I deal the cards. Yeah. Howdy, howdy. It's time for another story time with the schizophrenic. Once again, we're going back in time, but this time it's not elementary school, it's high school. Let's not bandy about too long, let's get right into it. I just sat there. Okay. Was all I said as tears began to well up in my eyes. With just a few words, my life it's over. There's no one thing to point to, the head director explained. It's a number of small things that added up over time. Your most recent <clears throat> uh, mistake was just the straw that broke the camel's proverbial back. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I expected to get chewed out for missing a day of competition, but this? This was unheard of! I'd known kids who had gotten caught smoking weed during rehearsals, and they'd just gotten slaps on the wrist. We're not even a competition-focused band. Hell, there's no tryouts to get into the band. You just show up with an instrument, and you're in. How else do you think we got 800 plus members? <sighs> he continued. You're consistently late for morning practice and you're remarkably forgetful. Your carelessness is unacceptable for a section leader. I had been made section leader for the 80-plus member trombone section both my junior and senior years. Something I was immensely proud of. Something that was leading directly to my downfall. We hold the student leadership to a higher standard than the rest of the escadrille. We must hold true to those standards. As such, I have no choice but to expel you from the band. My heart became a glass mirror, shattered in a thousand ways. My soul, a shackled prisoner, shrieking in the darkness of a lonesome prison cell. Which, ironically, is exactly where I wanted to be at that moment, alone and screaming. I squelched out another week. Okay, as I was dismissed. Tears were rolling down my cheeks as I walked out of his office. A bandmate who just happened to be in the hallway as I left noticed my distraught countenance and asked, Hey man, you alright? I was unable to speak, so I simply shook my head no and performed my own funeral march to the nearest practice room. The practice rooms were soundproofed, so I could cry for as long and as loudly as I wanted to, without fear of being disturbed. And cry, I did. The next few months were hard. Band was my life. All my friends were in band. Or... The people I thought were my friends were all in band. Within a week of getting kicked out of band, I was no longer welcomed at the lunch table I had been sitting at for that whole semester. These were people I had shared meals and laughs with for months. People that I had known personally for years. There were no words for me only turned backs and closed off seats. I was truly alone. I took this to heart. I told everyone who hadn't already ignored me to just stop talking to me. For the rest of my senior year, I was going to go it alone. I did have one friend left, 
But, as I would learn later, even he hated my guts at the time. He just felt sorry for me, and pity hung out with me at lunch. But that's not the end of the story. Not just yet. Every year, around Halloween, the Allen High School Marching Band hosts an event called the Boo Bowl to celebrate the holiday. Simply put, at the home game closest to Halloween, everybody gets to dress up in a costume and march the show in costume instead of in uniform. Good fun. Now, I had been kicked out of the band for a couple of months at this point. One person had even held a small funeral for me on Facebook. It was over. Nobody was thinking about it anymore. Everyone had moved on. And I was acutely aware of this. In fact, I had a plan to use that. I was going to crash the Boo Bowl. I had it all planned out. I had a Spartan costume that had a face obscuring helmet and I could ride my bike with my trombone to the event instead of taking my truck and risk anybody recognizing I was there. I did have a decision to make, however. When do I sneak in? I had a few options. I could wait until halftime and try and sneak in then, or maybe I could try and sneak my way in during the march from the practice field to the stadium. Neither were great options. The first meant sneaking past security at the stadium, so that was a no-go. The second would leave me too exposed on the road, and I would be easily noticed on my approach, so that wasn't an option either. No, I had to risk entering before the march even began. I would make my entrance before the practice run. This was still risky though, as it gave me the most amount of time to be caught before the game even began. But I needed this. Risk and all, I was going to have the last laugh. Even though I doubted anyone would recognize my bike, I locked it up across the school where no one would see and walked my way over to the practice field. I was as excited as I was nervous. One could even say I was scared. But I blended in well with the flow of exuberantly bedecked teenagers as we made our way past the open gate and onto the field. Looking around, I saw many true masks, and suddenly I grew concerned that my mask was not up to the task of hiding my face. My fears were confirmed whenever one of the junior trombone section leaders recognized me and blurted out, John? I motioned to him to hush up and I took him aside. I told him, yeah, it's me. Calm down. Don't tell anyone I'm here, okay? His bewildered expression was his only reply. As an aside, I always felt like this guy had a crush on me because he would always say really suggestive stuff around me and was just generally very flirtatious to me. But I hadn't come to terms with my own sexuality at the time, so I never accepted any of his advances, even though he was pretty cute. So it goes. This frustration that I caused him may have been my demise. The practice run was set to begin any moment now, as each individual of the mass of 800 teenagers tracked down their precise starting position on the field. It had been a while, but I remembered my place and covertly positioned myself there. This, most likely, was the mistake that cost me. The head director knew every spot like the back of his hand, and knew that my spot should be empty. Whether he spotted me this way, or a would-be lover scorned ratted me out, the result was the same. I knew something was wrong when I noticed the head director wasn't in his usual spot in the stands. I swiveled my head to the left, 
And then to the right. To no avail. I didn't see him. When suddenly, whoom, two heavy hands gripped my shoulders from behind with firm resolve. And quietly, yet threateningly, I heard the head director's voice declare. If you don't get the fuck off my field immediately, I will call the police and have you arrested for trespassing. Am I clear? I didn't even turn around. I just left. Never had I been threatened like that before in my entire life let alone by a grown man. I was scared. Even though a part of me hated his guts, and a part of me to this day hates his guts, I still respect the man, and I respected him then too. So whenever he threatened to call the cops on me and have me arrested, I took him at his word, and I got the fuck out of there. And thus ended my last hurrah, my last attempt at glory. Didn't even make it to the stadium. Damn. <sighs> to this day, I don't know how people reacted. If they reacted at all. I was totally out of the social loop by then. I felt like I had done all I could, though, to fight against an unjust punishment. I made my point. You can kick me out, but I'm gonna come back anyways. And then that way... I felt good. I felt a slight sense of peace. I didn't go down without a fight. And that's the story of how I got kicked out of and snuck my way back into the Allen High School marching band. If you made it this far, you're a f f fucking legend. And I hope that your coffee is always the right temperature. Good luck and have fun out there, y'all. And I'll see you in the next vid.